，抱歉我们第一次，所以中间还需要很多来适应的地方。好，请大家谅解谅解。好，我们很感恩了。今天，当真的你看到像呃姊妹祷告的，看到我们的孩子们，我们一起来敬拜。下面的，真的我们都在一起来敬拜神的时候，特别我们一起唱歌的时候，真的圣灵会帮助我们每个人。因为我们主恩之家的教会在神的里面，按照他的旨意，我们不断的长大。好，我们的每个人的生命也都一样。很感恩，我们今天还有 Pastor Kurt t h o m a n 啊，来到我们中间。啊，真的很感恩，因为知道 Pastor Kurt 是几年之前。然后 I hope you can say <笑>。好，那我先把 Pastor Kurt 的一些呃呃这个经历给大家简单介绍一下，我们先彼此认识一下。在我们的 message 之后，如果你还是感兴趣的话，我们可以彼此更多的交通，好吗？呃，很感恩 ，Pastor Kurt 是呃，在一九呃九三年的时候呃大学毕业，然后呢，他在九五年就开始服侍，那个时候他在十三岁的时候已经信主，然后呢，已经有生命愿意去服侍，所以很长的一段时间就是在服侍的里面。因为很感恩的是，在一九九六年的时候啊、呃，他在九五年就到了台湾。1995, you were in Taipei, Taiwan, right? In Taiwan, he met his wife, 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 right? In Taiwan, 这十六年间，他是在台湾或者在美国的华人基督教会来一直来服侍，十六年来服侍服侍我们华人，很感恩的。然后呢，在二零一一年到二零一九年，他在 Grace 啊呃 Covenant Church 在 Philadelphia， 还有现在的这个地方叫 By Mar， 是不是在 Pennsylvania 那边开始服侍，做主堂牧师，所以很感恩。而且认识 Pastor Kurt 的是在呃。其实，在徐黎的大主 Sherry 的婚礼上面，然后呢，在 wedding ceremony 的时候 ，Pastor Kurt 是在里面，所以我们可能认识你，不一定认识我们，<笑>所以很感恩了。然后呢，那个在这个神祝福的家庭里面，他现在有一个十七岁的儿子 Nathan， 啊，十九岁 ，sorry， 你你到底有没有十九岁？ OK， 这个就 OK， 十九岁的 Nathan 和十七岁的 Naomi。是不是你也起来跟我们大家认识一下好吗？好，我们欢迎你。很感恩今天我们可以啊、呃、由 Pastor Kurt 来带领神的信息来帮助我们。今天呢啊、呃、Pastor Kurt 带来的信息是呃 put o f f put off and put on 就是脱去和穿上。主题经文在以弗所书四章第二十二带和到二十四节，我们来一起来齐声诵读好不好？好，以弗所书四章二十二到二十四，二十二，大家一起，就要脱去你们从前行为上的旧人，这旧人是因私欲的迷惑渐渐变坏的，必要将你们的心智改换一心，并且穿上新人，这新人是照着神的形象造的，有真理的仁义和圣洁。好，我们听英文一起。The put off your old self. Which belong to your former manner of life and is corrupted through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after the kindness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, okay, Pastor Kurt, please. Well, thank you. Uh, great to be here with you. Uh, Nathan's birthday is July 4th. So whenever the firecrackers go off, he thinks it's for him. Um, and I gave the information before July 4th, so yes, now he's, he's 19. Um, today we will look at Ephesians chapter 4. So if you have your word, if you have your phone... You can take it out and uh, look at this message. I do promote looking at the Bible a 
observing what it says and then learning from that, okay, versus just, oh, I feel like it means this. And um, I guess we already had the introduction of myself, but uh, yeah, Nate, Naomi, uh, Melon, uh, and Nate and Naomi were both born in Taiwan. Uh, and I always say they're MIT, made in Taiwan, uh, but they don't go to MIT. So um, I usually start uh, my messages with a little bit of a dad joke. I don't, do any of you tell dad jokes? Any dads out there tell dad jokes? Okay, you know, d dad jokes are either painful, like, oh, that was bad, or they can be funny, okay? And I know some of the youth tried to escape, but then they brought you back in. So <laughs> you, you get the dad jokes too. So we're going to be looking at Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. I do encourage you to take notes. So please take notes, uh, write things down, because if your memory is as good as mine, you do want to write them down. First dad joke, okay, um, you know, the suspenders, the things that, that, you know, you know they go over like this. Those suspenders went to jail. You know why? Because they held up a pair of pants. Held up a pair of pants. Okay. Okay, that uh, didn't go over so, you know, maybe painful, but maybe a little funny. And then any of you been watching the Olympics? Okay. You know, Switzerland. Yeah, what's so great about Switzerland? I'm not sure, but the flag is a big plus. The flag has a big red cross, plus, big plus. Okay. See, some of you are like, oh, that was bad. But now, if you're a dad and, you know, your kids aren't here, you can take those, tell them to your kids. Um, today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about successful living. And successful living is very simple, right? And this is what we're going to talk about. Uh it's you, you need to put off something, and then you need to put on something. Okay, we can talk about the Olympics. If you're going to be in the Olympics, you know, some of you need to put off what you eat. you got to change your diet and put on a new diet. If you have certain habits, these Olympic swimmers, wow, amazing, or even the, the uh, you know, ping pong, definitely, pop, golf. You're going to have to put off certain habits, certain time, and put on some new training methods, even maybe relationships. You're going to have to put off some type of friendships like, I'm sorry, I can't go to the movies, I can't play video. I, I got to put on a new time schedule. So it's just very simple. It works for anything. Any of you drive cars, okay? You, you got to change your tires. You got to put off the old tires, put on the new tires for safety, for watching over your family. Uh, it's just a very simple concept, but it's so difficult for us to do. Today, we read Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. We read it. We're going to read it again. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, okay, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Verse 23, to be made new with the attitude, the renewing of your mind, and to put on the new self, which is created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So write this down. If you want to be successful, write this down. One, put off. Put off the old self. Two, put on the new self. It's not too confusing. Question, what do you need to put off? Father God, right now, would you come to speak to us? And would you tell us, Father God, what we need to put off? Now, this word, put off, means to, it, it's made of two words in the Greek. It's apo tithome. It's a prefix and then the main word. Tithome is simply to put, like I'm going to put this controller on the table, okay? Or I'm going to put my uh, my my shoes, shades, into the, the apartment. It's just a simple word, put. But the prefix.
prefix is very important. And whenever you see this prefix, it, it, it's super important because it means to separate. You separate from something in a way that the relationship that you have with that other thing dies. When it says put off, that means whatever relationship, whatever habit, whatever sinful nature, whatever depression, whatever darkness you have, you separate from it in a way that it is cut off and it dies. Like when I used to live in Taiwan, I, I used to wake up in the morning, flip on the lights, and there goes cockroaches. Okay? I didn't say, oh, little cockroach, come here. Let me hold you. Let me love you. Let me multiply you. No, you're like, bam, relationship over. Done. And when Paul is saying to you and I to put off the old self, that's what he's saying. That this old self that is harming you, hurting you, killing you, you need to put it off. One night I was watching TV. Any of you watch TV? If you're young, don't raise your hand. Your mom and dad think you're studying all the time. I guess the young people now, they just watch YouTube, Internet, TikTok. I was woke up in the middle of the night, and I fl flipped on the show, and it showed this guy with a big sore on his leg. And then they started talking about this guy. They had the sore on his leg, and then he would, it, it, it was like bothering him. He couldn't get it better, so he decided to put some salve on it, cover it. But when he did that, it got worse. He was like, oh, there's pain. So he would uncover it, open it up, let it air out, and then it was better. Well, they started talking about this guy, and he had traveled to the Amazon, and he was an adventurer, and he came back from the Amazon. Well, he kept trying to heal it and cover the sore, but it got worse. It, it, was, it was hurting so much, so he'd uncover it and got better, and he did this for like a month on, month on, month. Finally, I don't know how many of you don't go to the doctor. I'm like, eh, I don't want to go to the doctor. I'll take care of myself. Any of you out there like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I'll take care of myself. Finally, after two, three months, he goes to the doctor, and the doctor pulls out this parasite that's like a foot long. And the thing had been eating him, and, and find out the name of the show is called Monsters Inside of Us. <laughs> and, and, and pulls out this parasite. That is the old self. That is your old sins, your old habits. This is your life, former way of living before Christ. If you don't separate from it, and he didn't pull the parasite out and say, oh, let's put you in another spot. Okay? Killed it. Separated. Destroyed it. Put off the old self, Paul is saying. And this is what we need to do in order to survive. Because if we don't put off the old self, if we don't kill the parasite, it will kill us. Now, why put off the old self? Why put off the right? Today's culture, today's living, you love the self. You keep the self. You nourish the self. It's all about me. But Paul, the Bible says that sometimes the me, the self, the old self, is not healthy. The, the self has some problems. Now, when we look at this scripture, if you look in your Bible, look in your Bible right now, that verse 22, what is the problem? Verse 22 says it's being corrupted. It's being corrupted by Deceitful desires. Now, this word corrupted means to, it's being spoiled. It's withering. It's wasting away. Like, you ever buy a bag of apples, and then you, you, you keep them in the bag, and about a week later, you pull out one of the apples, and it's spoiled? And then, actually, it infects the other apples with this strange taste. This is what he's talking about. He's saying, you're old way of living, habits, sins, all that stuff before Christ, if you don't put it off, it's corrupting you. It's spoiling you. It's harming you. Last summer, 
Naomi gets ready to go back to school. She needs one of those Texas I-95s. And he used, yeah, you got to get one of those for the calculus and stuff like that. And the thing wouldn't work. So we're pushing the buttons. We're hitting it. You know, I don't know if any of you are hitters. You know, like you hit it on the table. Maybe that will work. Couldn't get it to work. Finally, we take off the back. There's the problem. It's the batteries. We got this green ooze coming out. We got this flaky white stuff. Looks like a little bit like Santa Claus's beard growing out of the battery. The problem was that the very makeup, the chemical makeup of the battery was eating itself. That's like you and I. Our old self, those old habits, those sins, those nature, it begins to eat yourself. The very things that drive us can actually corrupt us, spoil us, harm us. This is what Paul's talking about. The old self is being corrupted. Now, in, in Greek, the, the nature of this, this verb, oh, we're going way too fast. This is usually why I don't bring PowerPoints, because I don't, I don't know how it got there. Go back, no, no. Yep, there we go. We'll just keep it there. Um, the, the nature of this put off verb is, is uh, which, which is being corrupted, is correct translation, it's uh, middle voice. A middle voice means that you're the subject and you're doing the action upon yourself. <laughs> so it's saying yourself is corrupting yourself. That the very battery is eating itself. And it's very important to understand that, that the whole reason he's saying put off the old self is because it's eating yourself. The parasite is killing you. So you need to separate from it in a way that it dies. Now, what is the corrupting chemical in our life? What is eating us away? What do we observe here? Which is being corrupted by, go ahead and say it, deceitful desires. Now, the, the word desire here is passions, lusts. In the Bible, it usually has a little bit of a negative connotation, but not always. Not always. There can be good desires for the Lord. So we need to see the word before it, deceitful. And this word means it's tricking you. It's lying to you. It's a fraud. In a way that the Greek says that it brings treachery. It brings some major problems to your life. In American culture, they have things called baby showers. And baby showers are not giving a baby a bath okay, or a shower. It's where you come in. The shower word, I think, becomes where you shower them with gifts. You give them a lot of gifts. So my, my friend, Chad, he was throwing a baby shower for his neighbors because he wanted to reach out to them with the love of Christ. And so he says, yeah, for this baby shower, I'm making a diaper cake. Diaper cake. How do you say diaper, honey? Niao bu, huan niao bu. I remember doing a lot of huan niao bu uh, for Nate and Naomi. Uh, but he's going to make a diaper cake. So I, I love like like my wife she likes salty and you know spicy I like sweet so I'm making a diaper cake and I'm thinking diaper cake uh probably inside some like chocolate cake chocolate because you know a diaper and then on the outside is probably some sweet uh you know white icy because diapers are white you know and so I'm I'm just you know three or four I'm thinking man I'm gonna be eating Cake, gonna be nice, gonna think it's gonna be awesome. I show up at the party and there's the diaper cake. I go over, you know, I try to talk a little bit. I'm a pack. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? But then I'm like, hey, what's the diaper cake? It's made out of diapers. 
it's made out of real diapers. It's basically a way to say, hey, I'm going to shower you with diapers because, you know, kids need a lot of diapers. I was hurt. I was hurt. I was a bit angry. I was prepared to be eating sweet chocolate cake. Now, did Chad deceive me? My friend Chad, did he deceive me? No. Did the, did the cake deceive me? No. My desire for that cake, all of my expectations and hopes, deceived me. Doesn't mean they're always wrong or bad, but he's saying they can trick you into treachery and make you angry and bitter and do things that you shouldn't be doing. So he says you need to put off that old self, which is being corrupted by these deceitful desires. Uh, I say a good, usually I get a person, but I don't want to harm any people, so... this old self on our back, right? We're carrying around this old self. We know Jesus. We know we should put off the old self, but we got this old person still on us. They're weighing us down. They're pulling us down. They're deceiving us. They're causing treachery in our life. And he says you need to put that off in a way that the relationship surrender is destroyed is no longer there. Father God, what part of the old self, what old self, what things in my life do I need to separate from in a way that the relationship is destroyed because it's hurting me, Lord. It's killing me. It's making me bitter. I have unforgiveness. I have anger. I hear these lies and I believe them. Lord, give me the truth. Destroy the relationship in a way that it never harms me again. Now, I, I just would like to clarify some things about desires because I feel like a lot of us, we, we get confused about this. Okay, so that's the next slide, I believe. Yeah. Biblical facts about desire. We each have these desires inside of us. Okay, we have passions. We have drives. Number two, these desires are not all wrong. Okay, they're not all wrong. But these desires have the potential to deceive us, to trick us. So, desires need to be controlled or crucified. Just take, for example, the Lord has made me, my wife, a sexual being. A, a desire for sex is not all wrong, but it has the potential, this drive, this lust to deceive us if it's not used inside of a healthy marriage relationship. I have a couple right now in counseling was not used inside a healthy marriage relationship. Now there's lack of trust. There's betrayal. There's hurt. There's confusion. These are some just facts about desires. This is what God says in his word about the controlling or crucifying of desires. Romans 6, 12, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you will obey its evil desires. Desire, sin, the flesh gives way to these evil desires. Galatians 5.16, I say then, walk by the Spirit. Okay, you got the Spirit. Will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Holy Spirit, fill me. Galatians 5.24, now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. 
Paul simply says, how do we live life as successfully? Put off that old self. Separate from it in a way that the relationship is destroyed. Because like a battery that goes bad, it will begin to corrupt you from the inside out. It will deceive you. It will lead you astray. Paul says, put off. So we move on to the second part, verse 23 through 24. And it says, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Successful living, very simple. Put off, there's things you need to put off. And put on the new self. When we say put on the new self, it means to put on Christ. That's Jesus. That's the Son of God in his salvation, in his love, in his kindness, in his goodness to put him on. This has two sections. One is to be made new. Write that down. I need to be made new. It means to become young again. It's used in John 3, 3. Very, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. This means to renew, be made new, to renovate your life. I like to do construction. Any of you like to do construction? No, like hire the person, right? Yeah. I like construction, so I was working in a basement apartment, and I started to tear out some of the walls and stuff. This was like retro 1950s. Now it was old. I mean, the refrigerator, I think, was one of the first re refrigerators ever invented. The thing was still running. You know, the old stuff works. So. Had to get rid of it. I started tearing out the old, and as I'm tearing out the walls, I find out termites were in there. Termites are crazy. They took this pine board, which is usually stiff, made it into paper. Now it was weak. You got to be made new. You got to get rid. Of the old. I was tearing out the walls and I found out, hey, there's a window behind here. Somebody had just been closed the window. I opened it up, light shines in. Some of you don't have a lot of light shining in. Because you're not being made new. came to the East Coast, and as I'm traveling around the East Coast, especially over here in Philadelphia where I live near the airport, I see all these houses have garages, but none of the cars are in the garage. Uh, what's the purpose of a garage? Storage, here we go. Yeah, well, what's the Chinese word for garage? Has the word car in it. Chuts it. Chuh. There we go, whatever. But because there's so much stuff in the garage, they can't use it for its correct purpose. You, you can write this down if you like. You have to make room for the new. You, you can't be made new or get the new in without making space for the new. So if you're just keeping that old person on you, you're keeping all the stuff of the old person with you, all the desires, all of the sins, the new can't come in. So hard. Yeah, Jesus is with you. Jesus is, but he's always like, you want to choose Jesus? No, I want to choose all the stuff. I want to live for the purposes of, of the garage, put my car. I want to live for the purposes of Jesus. No, I want to live for the purposes of all the stuff. 
Some of you need to open that garage door and begin to take out the stuff that is cluttering your life, causing problems in your life, and put it off and separate it and say, Jesus, you come on into my garage. You drive my car. So we have this. Put on, be made new in the attitude of your mind. What's your attitude of your mind? Who is Jesus? And write this down. The attitude of the mind is he is Lord. Not the stuff. Not the old self. Oh, I'm going to follow the old self. It's hurting me. It's pulling me down. My sins are raised, killing my marriage. My old habits are making me, me depressed. The, the lies of the world, the lies on Instagram, they're, they're harming me. He's like, be gone, Jesus is Lord. Stop, be gone. Jesus is Lord. My wife, she came over at the age of 13. She's all good. Just love her. She's great. Good, you know. 13, mom dropped her off. Mom went back to Taiwan. Mom loves her, but, you know, better life in America. Well, she's here illegally. God still loves her. Jesus, but she's here. So, she goes through life. She meets Jesus in a stormy night in Florida. Hurricane, lightning, she's all alone. All alone. Mom's back in Taiwan. And she's basically, God, if you're out there, could you come and be with me? Well, Fast forward a few years, and, you know, there's a lot of problems in her life. Won't mention them all. But decided to, hey, you need to be just a kid again. You, you know, 13, you're full adult. doing. You go to Maine, and you go to a school up there. Well, she she's going to get a roommate, and this roommate, she walks in, and here's this roommate. She's got a big smile and everything. And just as she's interacting with her roommate that night, she asks her, why are you so happy? Why are you? So, why is there such a peace? What, what about it? She says, well, I just came to know Jesus about six months ago. And then this roommate introduces her to the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. Well, fast forward now, she, she goes to, graduates from high school, goes to Florida, Rollins College, goes from there, and she wants to serve and obey the Lord. So she goes up to Asbury University, where my son is going. And she finally has to tell the school, I'm here illegally. The school says, well, what, what can we do? Let's find out. So they actually go, and they talk with the Kentucky representative. Well, what can we do? Well, there's not really a lot we can do for you because we just don't have the papers and stuff, so just kind of be quiet. No. <laughs> School says it's okay for you to stay. They don't say don't stay. Kentucky State, it's okay for you to stay. Jesus says, yeah, you should go back to Taiwan. Who's your Lord? Who's your Lord? You're going to live for the American dream. You're going to live for the money. You're going to live for your heart's desires and everything you want. Or are you going to live for Jesus? I've got all this stuff I want to put in my garage. Jesus.
says, I don't want you to come into my garage. I don't want to be made new. Not right now. Could you wait until I'm 88? Bashirba, that's a good number. In Chinese, right? Then I'll be good to go. But Paul says the only way to have that life, to really live life, to have life and life to the full, is to put off that, that old self that's pulling you down, corrupting you, corroding you. Empty that garage and be made new. The attitude of your mind by saying, Jesus, he is my Lord. He has the title to my life. He reigns. There's a second part to this put on the new. The second part is that, 24, put on the new self. Put on the new self. You can write that down. Be made new. Put on the new self. Put on is simply to actually, it, it's, it's to go into. But it's more than that. It's almost like to submerge yourself underwater. It's actually used of the setting, setting sun as it submerges into the land from what they saw. The meaning finally became to clothe yourself, to submerge yourself into clothing. And so Paul's understanding of this put on the new self, in some of your translations say to clothe yourself in the new self, in Christ. Are you clothed? Top of your head, tip of your toe, with Christ. I, uh, when I think of this submerging into clothing, the deepest submersion in clothing I ever had was when I was in college and I was a freshman. And when you're a freshman, you do interesting stuff. But my interesting thing was I, I did a lip sync. Anyone? Lip sync. Lip sync is karaoke. Okay. And, and basically, you, you, but you don't sing. Lip sync is you just move your, you, you want to hear me lip sync because I'm best at that. Um, so anyhow, we had this uh, song and with Ron, Ron, Ronald, no, Arnold Palmer, no, Ronald Palmer, Ronald, Robert, Robert Palmer, and he sang this song, Simply Irresistible, She's So Fine. No telling where the money went. Anyhow, it's not a real Christian song. Uh, and we were the backup girls. There was four girls. I'm not a girl. I'm a guy. But we put on women's clothing. And then one guy stood in the front. He was like, she's so and lip syncing. And part of this was I had to put on this tight woman dress. And I was submerged in that thing. And it was short. Hairy legs. So they said, you need to put on pantyhose. I don't know how to translate that word. Wow. Ladies, God have mercy on you. Because trying to get on those pantyhose, man, I was submerged. They were stuck to me. They were hard to get off. And that's the best I could come up with for submerging, sticking to you, keeping on the new self, Jesus. Now we got to talk about clothing because clothing in the New Testament, Old Testament, you know how many of you have your closet full of clothes? Like Kohl's, you love to go to Kohl's. Love to go to, you love to shop online. Shoes. Some ladies, man, your shoes. Like, I knew a woman, she had 50 pairs of shoes. And she moved. She 
She's like, I can't do it. Can't do what? I can't get rid of my, my shoes. <laughs> she, anyhow, back to clothes. Old Testament, you have a pair of work clothes, a pair of wedding clothes. Meaning, what you work in, what you do special things in. That was it. So clothes are special. But, but I want to relate real quick, clothes and Jesus. First of all, what do you do with clothes? You put them on. We say change them. Put them on. Jesus, you put him on. You put him on in the morning. For work. For your family, for your friends. Second part about clothes is they go with you wherever you go, right? If you put your clothes on, you praise God, praise God, you all are clothed. They came with you today. Does Jesus go with you? Are you like, oh, I'm a private Christian? I believe in Jesus, you know, only today on Sunday between the times of 10 and, wow, the church goes long. It's 1130. Wow. Or did he, you know, he goes with you. Lord, would you go with me today as I go to school? There's somebody who always sits alone in the back. I really don't like him. But would you help me to go say hi? Not only that, another element about clothes is they are what others see. Okay, you, you're looking at my, you're like, wow, this guy, he's pretty hip, pretty cool. <laughs> only because my, my kids helped me get these clothes. You know, I, I have like these old 1990s, you know, like <laughs> little bit baggy plant pants. family helped me to look, but it's what you see, right? He, got, he has a really nice tie. I wasn't sure if I should wear a tie today. I took a chance. Do people see Jesus? Because you're clothed in him. I actually, uh, I'm a door dasher. Anybody know you door dash, Uber Eats, Grubhub? I do door dashing right now. Basically, I don't know. It's outside of my realm of concept, but it gives me money, so we don't do it. But so you order online, and somebody brings you food. So when I DoorDash, I get to text the person. Yes. Hey, I'll be there in two minutes after I deliver the food. Thank you so much. Jesus loves you. I want you to be encouraged today. Press on. Did you see my clothing? Do you see Jesus who says he loves you? How many like to hear the words, somebody loves you? I tell Christians all the time, Jesus loves you. You know what they write back to me? Thanks. I'm like, come on! What kind of clothing are you wearing? Not only that, about clothing, but they become one with you, right? Especially your shoes. Remember my, my son, he's a runner, and I'm a runner, but he gets better shoes than me because, you know, he's cool and young. So whenever he's done with his running shoes, I don't suggest this, but I put his shoes on. But his foot is different. So it takes a while for now the, the shoe to form my shape. Now, I don't know which way this works, but it's supposed to work. We become one with Jesus. That the sandals he wears or the shoes he wears now, our foot forms to his foot. We walk like he walks. I don't know. How, how did Jesus walk? Okay. Jesus. I don't know. 
maybe Michael Jackson was. Last of all, with clothing, they are precious. And you know what? I, I would say 90% of my clothes in my closet, they're not precious. And to be honest, for some of you, that's Jesus in your life. To be honest, I don't want to harm hurt you come because your wife or husband Because your mom and dad has you come. Thank you. But when you begin to empty the garage, when you begin to separate from that old person that the world says you should keep, and you begin to have a renovation of your life, he will give you a new purpose of love and grace in a direction that now you begin to clothe yourself with Jesus and you say, you are precious to me. I've gained so much of the world. But to gain you, the only person who stays with me, I'm so thankful. Could bow your head. For some reason I got this picture of a house. And the heart of house is a bit has a shadow over it. The windows are all closed, the curtains are shut, the door is shut. And today I feel like someone in here has been living in darkness for Jesus. Jesus just wants to say to you, you don't need to live in darkness anymore. You can choose to put off that old self, to open the windows and the curtains, open the door, and he says, I will come in and brighten. I will give you hope. The depression that is over you, if you just rest in me, I will make your burdens light. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to achieve every award. You don't have to always list your resume. You can sit and rest in me, and I will make you today. Let it begin to Jesus. And say this simple prayer, Jesus, I choose to put off my old self and I choose to put on you. All the things in the garage which I keep and I think will help me live, I give to you. You are the new owner. Take out what I don't need. You decide. You are my king.